So welcome back to the channel. Um, this is actually a video I shot a while back. I have a buddy that buys a lot of auction stuff, a lot of salvage stuff and fixes it up, um, drives it for a while and flips it. He comes to me occasionally and wants me to color match a panel, repaint a panel for him. He bought this Toyota Sienna minivan for his wife that had rear end damage and he found a color matched hatch for it but did not find a rear bumper. So he went ahead and bought an aftermarket rear bumper for it and asked me if I could paint it for him. I don't paint that often. For anyone like me that uh, just wants to paint something every now and then and wants to do as good of a job as you can um, at home in your garage, you can actually pull off a pretty decent paint job, um, especially if you're just doing single panels at a time. I just figured I would pull out the camera, record the process, kind of talk through the steps of it. Hopefully this video helps someone that might want to tackle a little paint job on their own, save themselves some money. I'm gonna start by getting all the plastic off, getting the bumper unwrapped. At this point, I'm gonna grab some red Scotch-Brite scuff pads. You wanna be sure to get every surface of the bumper scuffed really well to give your primer and paint something to adhere to. I like to get all the loose dirt and dust cleaned up off the floor the best I can. I also like to wet the entire garage floor. That way as I'm painting any loose dirt or dust that I missed can't blow up from the air coming out of the gun. Where I can, I like to spray the walls and anything else that water's not going to hurt. Stop it! Anywhere I can, I also try to spray the ceiling and the walls, uh, basically anything that water's not going to hurt, just to keep any other dust from blowing around. I don't have anything like an actual bumper or fender stand like a body shop would use, so I'm just going to bring in my saw horses to get everything set up on. So my saw horses weren't quite tall enough. I had to put some boards underneath them. As you can see, the the other corner of the bumper is almost touching the ground. I got to be able to get up underneath and spray all those edges. So we'll see if that's going to work. I may have to go higher. I'm using mainly Nason products for this project. You can buy these at any O'Reilly's paint shop. We're gonna start out with the Nason sealer and then we need an activator for that. Next, we move on to our metallic base coat and activator for that. This base coat also calls for a reducer. For clear, we're gonna use this U-Pole brand and I'm using this standard temperature hardener. You're gonna to wanna to have a couple mixing cups with measurements on them. Also these cone filters for putting the product into your gun. Plenty of lacquer thinner for cleanup. And also some sort of wax and grease remover to make sure everything is nice and clean before we spray. You'll definitely want some rubber gloves to keep your hands clean. Some masking tape will come in handy. And you're gonna need a spray gun. This is the one I'm using. This one runs about $150 at my local wholesale paint supplier. And this is the cup that holds the paint in my gun. You'll also definitely want to have more paper towels than this. And like I've already mentioned, plenty of red Scotch-Brite scuff pads. Right here I'm using some 600 or 800 grit sandpaper just to knock off some imperfections I found on the bumper. Next we're going to grab our wax and grease remover and we want to be sure to wipe the entire panel down really well. We've got a lot of dust left over from scuffing everything. As you can see quite a bit of dirt and debris coming off the bumper from where we scuffed it. This stuff dries pretty quickly, so I'm going to go ahead and do this probably at least two or three times until my rag starts coming off clean. Thank you. 
since the little step part on this bumper already came covered up from the manufacturer, I won't really need to tape anything off on this bumper. But I'm going to go ahead and use some plastic to cover up different things in my shop that I don't want to get covered with overspray. This overspray gets pretty nasty, especially the clear coat. It will get on everything. Cover anything you don't want to get dirty. Get the gun assembled. Get your pressure set for whatever gun you're using. I believe my gun requires somewhere around 25 to 30 PSI. This could also change depending on what type of product you're spraying. This sealer has been sitting in my shop for a little bit. I really should have taken this back to them and made them put it in the shaker for a while, but... I'll use the best shaker I have available to me. So this particular product mixes four to one. I'm gonna find the four to one ratio on my cup and mix up however much material I think I'll need. In this case, I'm gonna fill to the first four. Then I'll grab my activator and fill to the second four in the corresponding column. Can't forget the most important part. Be sure to mask up. Be sure to have an extra piece of material, whether it's paper or wood or something that you can run a few test passes on. Be sure to get your gun set up before you spray whatever it is that you're actually painting. Future Colton here. Uh, for some reason, that file when I sprayed my first coat of primer got corrupted from my GoPro. So we'll skip to the next clip where I've already got the first coat of sealer on. So the sealer is on. I got a couple little bugs in here that I had to kind of go over with some thousand grit sandpaper just to smooth it out a little bit when you're painting in a garage with lights at night you're just gonna have to deal with some bugs but first coat of sealer is pretty good we're about to lay down some color i always like to go around and spray my edges first make sure i get coverage around the entire perimeter then i'll go back and spray the main parts of the bumper be sure to get plenty of overlap don't worry about laying it down thick you can put it on somewhat dry. It'll get thicker and smoother as you do more coats. Your first coat should really be more of just a tacky coat to give everything else something to stick to. Be sure on your long flat surfaces to try the best you can to make one long pass. Whatever product you're using should give you a flash time on it. I believe it was about 15 minutes on this base. After the first coat flashes, I'm going to go back and add a second coat a little bit thicker. Depending on the color and how it's covering, I will typically try to do at least three coats of base. Especially if I'm doing a metallic, I may go back and do a couple more coats just to make sure everything is laying down nice and even. After my last coat has splashed, I'm going to come in here with a tack cloth and just give everything a really light wipe down. This is just going to remove any little debris or dust that may have settled on it while you were letting it flash to get ready for clear coat. Now I'm going to follow pretty much the same procedure as the sealer and base coat, but we're moving on to clear. You'll notice how much foggier, stickier, and nastier the clear gets in the garage while I'm spraying. This is when you really want to make sure everything's covered up. Again, I'll start with the edges and my perimeter, and then I'll go ahead and do the rest of the bumper. Again, don't worry about getting the first coat too thick or smooth. Think of this as a tacky coat to give everything else something to stick to. I think I ended up putting two or three coats of clear on this. For a lot of things, you could cover it pretty well in two coats. I typically try to put three on most anything I'm painting. Well, here's the final result. <clears throat> Not my best work. Had a few issues. 
a little bit of a sag right there but it's down at the very bottom so hopefully that is not really going to get seen anyway this is a highly metallic paint which is tricky so that did not go as planned last night ran into a few issues um, as I was getting ready to spray the sealer the owner called me and said he thought uh, he'd give me the wrong paint coat. So he said stop painting. Don't paint anything on it yet So then I started to clean up and a Little while later he called me back and said no, I think you've got the right one. Go ahead and spray So I was behind the temperature dropped Drastically all I had was slow reducer in my base So that caused an issue where it took my base way longer to dry than it should have. Ended up getting a little bit of a sag in the metallic. I ended up getting several bugs that landed on the surface. So I ended up having to kind of turn on my heater, let that cure out, try to wet sand some of the bugs out as well as my sags, and then spray another two coats of base coat and then go on to clear where I, um, as you saw in the video, I decided to use the fast hardener for my clear. I bought the normal or the medium temp hardener for the clear to do this, but thankfully I had leftover um, fast cold temperature hardener. And I think laying that on certainly helped. I still ended up getting uh, one little sag, but it's now at the very bottom of the bumper. I don't think you see, will see it. And if he's that unhappy about it, um, I'll let him get it on the van. After all that cures out good, um, I will offer to come over and wet sand out that sag. If overall, that kind of covers uh, the typical paint job in your own garage. Those are some of the things you're gonna run into, some of the problems you may have. But overall, you know, I think for what I'm charging him, I think he'll be plenty happy for the vehicle this is going on. Hope I helped someone. Hopefully you learned a few things with this. Um, maybe learned a few things not to do from me. Feel free to leave comments. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that are more experienced than me and may have some tips to help other people. So feel free to point out my flaws, especially if it helps someone else out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.